Hi, this is Math 6, Unit 6, Lesson 1, Tape Diagrams and Equations. We're talking today about how tape diagrams and equations can show the relationships between different amounts. So this first lesson is a little bit of a review of some things you might have done in some prior grade levels. So let's just see how this all works together. First off, it says here are two diagrams. One represents 2 plus 5 equals 7. The other represents 5 times 2 equals 10. Which is which? Label the length of each diagram. And so we can see here in this first diagram, what do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five different boxes with two inside of each one. We compare that to this one, we have a box of two and a box of five. Okay? So when we look at this here, we have to decide which one's going to be essentially a tape diagram representing an addition equation and which one represents a multiplication equation. Well, recall a multiplication. What does the multiplication, um, what does that stand for? What does it represent? Well, we often talk about that as being something like groups of. So in this case here, we're talking about something that shows five groups of two, which becomes ten. And we look at these two tape diagrams here. Which one demonstrates or shows five groups of the value two? Well, this one has one, two in it, and this one has one, two, three, four, five. This one most looks like five groups of two. And we have five groups of two, and the total value of the whole thing is 10. So we put a 10 right there. And over here, this looks more like a two plus five equals seven. And so we can see these two different tape diagrams represent different things, don't they? Well, knowing that and using that information here, let's draw a diagram that represents each equation. The first one shows says 4 plus 3 equals 7. So what we could do here is we could draw a rectangle like so. And we could label that as being a length of 4. Again, this is just drawing something that doesn't be perfect. And this could be a length of 3, maybe slightly smaller. And for a combined length then of 7, something along those lines. Whereas this one is going to be four groups of three. So we can draw four groups. One, two, three, and four. Probably should make that bigger. <laughs> and each group has a three inside of it for a combined value of 12. Because four groups of three is 12. So we have an addition one and a multiplication one there as well. Okay. So let's move down to here, moving with the same idea, but now we're going to be replacing one of the numbers with a value of x. x here, as well as x throughout this tape diagram as well. And remember, x is just standing in the place of a number. It could be any number, right? Potentially it could be any number. Now in our case here, it's not going to be any number. It'll be one specific number, but we're not looking for a solution today. We're just talking about what this means. And so in this tape diagram, we're looking at a situation where you have the value of 4, and we're adding to the 4 another amount for a total of 12. Over here, we have four groups of the same value, which is x, and those four groups of x have a total value of 12. So this one becomes kind of our addition one, right? Addition. And this one looks more like a multiplication one. I'm going to go ahead and label this one A and this one B because we're supposed to match these different um, equations to the different diagrams. So the one that shows 4 plus x looks a lot like this one. 4 plus x equals 12. So that one goes to the first diagram. Number 2 says 12 divided by 4 is x. And we can see that here. This is 12 divided into 4 groups and the value of each group becomes x. So that matches there. 4 groups of x equals 12 matches b. This one, 12 equals 4 plus x. Notice with this one, it's the same equation. 4 plus x as the first one. 4 plus x, and they both equal 12. So the order is not what's important here. It's just showing you the same equation and from the diagram in a different way. They just happen to be the same. So this would be a. For 5, it's 12 minus 4. So if you have a whole thing of 12 and you take that away, you are left with x, or this was actually 12 minus x, sorry. 12 minus that will leave you with 4. So that's going to go with a. 
over here, just like we saw before. This is four groups of x, just like that one. So that's a b. And this one goes 12 minus 4, leaves you x left over, so a there. And that 12 minus 4 is the same as that 12 minus 4, so that's also a. And finally over here, <coughs> this is one you might think, well, it's addition, but what are we doing? We're doing repeated addition, which is really multiplication. This is an x plus an x plus an x plus an x. There are four of the x's, right? Which is this plus this plus this plus this equals 12. So that's going to go with choice B. All right, so that's the idea there. Let's take a look at the next activity. In the next activity, it says that we want you to draw diagrams for equations. For each di equation, draw a diagram and find the value of the unknown that makes the equation true. So we're going to draw a diagram and find the value of the unknown. So in this case, we have 18. And then we have a 3 plus an x. So we could draw that out something along this line. So we could have a 3. And then we can have a larger rectangle we chose to. We call that x. And the reason I made it larger is just because when I combine those two things together, I have a sum total of 18. So this one's going to be larger than 3. If it was less than 3, it'd be like number like 2 or 1. But 3 plus 2 is 5, not 18. So this has to be a larger value. Now in order to find that value, I could take 18. And if I was to take 3 away from 18, it leaves me with the value of x. Or in other words, if I do 18 minus 3, that's going to give me the value of x, which is going to be 15. And you could double check that. What is 15 plus 3? It's 18. In a similar way, we could take a look at this one and say this is also has a sum total of 18, but we're doing three groups of y. So we can do one group of y, we can do another group of y, and another group of y. And those three groups of y have a value of 18. Okay, so in other words, if I take the 18 and I break it into three parts, how could I divide the 18 into three parts evenly? In our case there, we're talking about 18 divided by 3, which equals 6. And that becomes our value of y. All right, this is just kind of a step, a next step from what we did in activity 1.2. All right, now are you ready for more? Is a great little problem. If you want a little puzzle, a little challenge there, you could definitely try that one. It's kind of fun to think about what this actually means. It says you're walking down a road seeking treasure. The road branches off into three paths. So you can think about path, you know, path A, path B, and path C. You know that only one of the guards is telling the truth, and the other two are lying, and here's what they say. And then guard one says the treasure lies down this path. So maybe this is guard one. And here's guard two who says no treasure lies on this path. Seek elsewhere. And guard three says the first guard is lying. Which path leads to the treasure? So use some logic and see if you can figure that one out. It's kind of a fun little riddle to play with. So in summary today, tape diagrams can help us understand the relationships between quantities and how operations describe those relationships. Diagram A has three parts that add to 21, right? Three parts add to 21. Each part is labeled the same letter. So we know the three parts are equal. So here are some equations that all represent diagram A. It could be x plus x plus x is 21. It could be three groups of x is 21. It could be 21 divided by three groups becomes x. Or even this one, x equals 1 third times 21. Right? That works as well because one of the x's is only 1 third of the whole thing. Makes sense. Now. We could look at part B and say, well, the diagram B has two parts that add to 21, all right? So we have a y and a 3. So we end up with a y plus 3 is 21. Or we could find the other things as do 21 minus 3 or 21 minus y equals 3. Those all work out just fine. OK, we're going to pause there. You're going to work on your homework, and we'll come back and do it together in just a moment. All right, here we go, homework time. Here's an equation, x plus four equals 17. Draw a tape diagram to represent the equation. Sure, so we're gonna draw an x like so. 
We'll add a little bit more to make that a four. And the whole thing together, when we add that up, is gonna equal 17. So which part of the diagram shows the quantity x? Well, that's gonna be this first part right there. That's the first box. The four is in the second box. And the 17 is gonna be actually the entire box joined together. So how does the diagram show that x plus four is the same value of 17? Well, we show that by saying that the large box, right, the whole thing combined, is a combination. When we join x and four, we get 17. So the large box is showing that when you join an x and a four together, you end up with 17. And that's just the basic way of explaining that one there. Number two. Diego is trying to find the value of x in five groups of x is 35. He draws his diagram but is not certain how to proceed. So here he has five groups, excellent. He has x inside of each group, so he has five groups of x. And what is the whole value? Well, to complete the tape guide diagram, we should say that the whole thing is equal to 35. So then if we want to think about, well, you might know five times some number equals 35. You might want to think of it that way. But we can also think about 35 being divided into one, two, three, four, five groups is going to tell me the value of x. And 35 divided by five is actually seven. And so x has a value of seven. Number three, draw a tape diagram and find the unknown value. Sure. So for this one, we're going to have an x plus a 9. It's going to combine together to make 16. So to see what's, what the x value is going to be, we could do 16, and we could take away the 9. And that'll tell us what is left for x. 16 minus 9 is 7, so x equals 7. Over here, we have four groups of x. So we have 1, 2, three and four. X is inside of each of them. It's the same size, same value. And the total is going to be 28. So in the same way, we could think about 28 being divided into those same four groups, one, two, three, four. And 28 divided by four is seven. So X equals seven. All right. And that's it for number three. Number four, it says to match the, each equation to one of the two tape diagrams. So this is just like what we did in our lesson today. So let's open this up, let's see what we have. And we see right away we have an X and an X and an X. We have three of those and they combine to make a nine. So this could be a three times X equals nine. Okay, that could work fine. It also could be an x plus x plus x equals nine, but most likely this is a multiplication division type of one. Over here, we see the x part plus the three part equals nine. So here we're dealing with addition and subtraction. We're here probably dealing with more multiplication division. So which one shows x plus three is nine? That's gonna be b. Which one shows three groups of x? Three groups of x, that's gonna be a. Three groups of x is again the same thing, that's a. Three plus x matches up here for b. And then we can see we're doing nine minus three gives you what's left over x, that's b. Here is nine divided into three groups gives you x, that's a. And then x, x, and x is the same one here, a. And that's the one that most kids probably get the most tripped up on. All right, moving on. Number five, six, and seven are good review questions from prior lessons. So it says, first of all, shopper paid 2.52 for 4.5 pounds of potatoes, 7.75 for 2.5 pounds of broccoli, and 2.45 for 2.5 pounds of pears. What is the unit price of each thing? Unit price means we want to know the price per one pound. Okay. So if you think of it this way, with the potatoes, we have a dollar amount and we have pounds. And we know that we have 252 for 4.5 pounds. 
So if we're talking about a unit price, how much, how many dollars for one pound? We consider as a table 4.5 divided by 4.5 gets you to one. So I do the same thing to this side, 2.52 divided by 4.5, and that gives me 0.56 for potatoes. So potatoes are 0.56 or 56 cents per pound. I can do the same thing here for broccoli, 7.75 for 2.5 pounds. So how much for one pound? We're going to divide 7.75 by 2.5. And 7.75 divided by 2.5 is 3.1, but I'm going to say 310 because we're dealing with dollars there. So that gives us a nice sense, no problem there, and that's for the broccoli. And then finally we have $2.45 for 2.5 pounds, dollars, pounds. This is for the pairs. So to get to 1, we're going to divide by 2.5. So again, divide by... 2.5 and 2.45 divided by 2.5 is equal to 0 0.98 or 98 cents per one pound. So a little computation but we're just setting up again with those tables like we used to use back in unit 5 and even before that as well. Alright number 6. It says a sports drink bottle contains 16.9 fluid ounces. Andre drank 80 percent of the bottle how many fluid ounces did he drink? All right, so what did he drink? Andre drank 80% of 16.9 ounces. That's what he drank. So we're gonna convert the percentage into a decimal. All right, 80% like this. And of is like multiplying. So 80% of 16.9 is gonna tell us, tell us how much he drank. So we could multiply that out, 16.9 times 0 .8, 7, 8 times 9 is 72, 8 times 6 is 48, 48 plus 7 is going to be 55, 55, and then 8 times 1 is 8, plus 5 is 13, and we see we have one, two digits behind the decimal, so we're going to move this this way. And so we end up with 13 point, that's terrible there, 13.52. 13.52 ounces is how much he actually drank, if he drank 80% of the bottle. And finally, number seven, we have a, a double number line here, okay, and you can use it or not, up to you. It says a daily recommended allowance of calcium for a sixth grader is 1,200 milligrams. So here we have 1,200. That's 100% of what you need. One cup of milk has 25% of the recommended allowance. How many milligrams of calcium are in a cup of milk? So we're trying to find out 25% of that number right there, which could be done by multiplying. You certainly could do 25% of 1,200. But if you want to use a tape diagram, let's look at how this works again. So 25%, I know that if I divide it in half, I have 50%. So what is half of 1,200? Half of 12 is six, and keep the hundreds there. And I do that because I know that half of 50 is 25%. So what's half of 600? Half of 600 is 300. So 25% of the recommended uh, daily allowance is gonna be 300 milligrams of calcium. So it's kind of cool to be able to see how that works on a double number line. All right, that's it for today. Hope that helps you out, and we'll see you next time.